Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photolearningism. I wanted to return to the Natron motion compositing tool, really fantastic free open source tool. We've touched on it before. I want to touch on it again, this time looking at image work. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is your first time joining in. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride. I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them and also join in the community experience and get the benefit of many different perspectives and many artists doing different things with all these tools. So thank you so much for coming along for this. Looking at Natron. Um, this can be a little intimidating because the interface is not what you'd expect. It's very much based on a, a node map approach, which takes some getting used to. And once you kind of figure that out, it starts to make a lot more sense. So we've looked at just simple uh, text uh, animation uh, and compositing in the past. And today I want to look at actually adding images and working with those because that's it's a little tricky. Um, I just wanted to step through it so we can all see it together. So first thing you'd have to do is go to image and read. You're actually adding an image reader. And I'll caution you, this does support raw images. I tried it out with Nikon raw images and it worked. It just really choked up my computer trying to work with that high res and that kind of detail. So you can do it, but just be aware <laughs> that you need a war horse to drive that, okay? Uh, so I'm going to choose a basic image to start with here, just so it's a little cleaner to work here. That should come around in a moment so we can actually see it on the screen. And as it's doing that, you may be wondering, okay, well, there's there's this image. That's, that's great. I see these properties on the right here, but where's all the fancy animation jazz? Where, where, what do I do with this? Well, <laughs> what we do there is we would need to add some actual things to do, right? Basic example is going to transform and transform. And with this, we get the usual properties that you'd expect with the other types of controls. Uh, maybe you want to scale. Okay. <laughs> So, we add our transform control. Let me just back off here so this is a little easier to see. And again, yeah, animation works like you'd expect. Let's scale up a little bit and I'm gonna back out here. Okay, so let's go to the beginning and find the place that we want to start. Okay. I am going to right click in the open space here where all these controls are. Set key on all parameters. That's our starting point. And we'll advance this up to 50. It just feels right. And let's make a change there. Maybe I want to make it bigger. Maybe I want to rotate it a bit. Do something else. And then again, right click, set key in all params. And we now have a little bit of animation to work with here. So that is a very basic starting piece here of working with images. It's kind of the trick of going to the image and then adding a reader. And then once you have the image, actually giving it something to do. It's a little bit different than when we did text because uh, that was you know more, more clear to understand. But um, that's the approach for there. You can get very complex digging from this point where you can add in layers that i'm not an expert on i'm learning it just again for full disclosure here but from playing around with and looking at how others have achieved it what i found is that under merge and merges there are these different options there the one i've seen used most is this plus option and really what this is going to do is give you the ability to connect up different things if I can make this work properly here. Okay. And then this gets connected this way. Let me just bring this over here. 
There we go. So we're going to put in this kind of merging switcher thing. And uh, from here, we can add other things. For example, if I wanted to put in some text at this level, and I'm just going to move around a little bit so we can see better. Uh, and that did not show up on the screen here. Let me see what we can do to make that in view. OK, so we've added in our text. Image is over here. I was going to bring that in so you can see it. <laughs> and we'll put in some text. And we don't want to take control of the viewer here. We do not want that. Instead, what we want to do is actually put that in here. And we should be able to drive that through. But we want this on the A source. OK. There we go. <laughs> I think we've got all the dots connected now. If I zoom in here, you can actually see the text that I've added. Um, and again, you can animate this fairly simply. All the properties are here um, to help you figure out what you're going to do with this uh, after you've styled it and done all that stuff. But it's again, this is more straightforward because all those manipulative properties, all those parameters are right here with the text properties. It's not like the image where you load the image and then you have to add those on after the fact. So that's that's kind of the catch here that I want to highlight, especially when you load the image in. And this is, again, a simple approach for how you can combine multiple elements. And there are ways to do this with images. It gets a little fuzzy because it starts um, somewhat overlaying them rather than giving you a full transparency option, at least the way that I was playing with it. So I'm going to keep doing that and get back to you on, on findings for that. But at least hopefully this gives you enough information that you can play around with it, get some working uh, multi-layer examples going, and figure out something awesome. So I want to thank you for hanging in there for this part and coming all the way through this and seeing this demo in Natron. Um, if this was helpful, please do give me a thumbs up because that does help me figure out what's useful to you. And I want to make sure we hit those points. Uh, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on the awesome content that we're going to get to in the future. And once again, thank you for spending this portion of your day or evening with me. I appreciate it so much. I'll see you at the next video. Take care.